Hi, you'll be glad to know we're near the end of this little section of algebra. We're on to the last little part of equations, and that is double-sided equations. And you're probably sitting there thinking, what on earth are you talking about? So, you may have not noticed so far, but all of the equations you've solved have had letters and numbers on the left, are like a mix. So you've had the letter X on the left, but on the right, there's only been a number. If you look back in your book, I'm not lying. On the right hand side, you've only ever had just a number. And then we, we did things to that number. So in this case, if I was going to solve this one, so let's get a bit of space. The first thing I would do to 47 is I would take away 5 because the rule is we always do the opposite. So 47 take away 5 is 42. And then I would divide by 7 to get rid of this 7. The opposite of multiplying is to divide, isn't it? So 42 divided by 7 is 6. So on the right-hand side, there was just a 47. And we, we took things from the left to the right, and we did the opposite. So when plus 5 went to the other side, it changed to minus 5. And when times 7 went to the right-hand side, it became divide by 7. And you're doing the opposite like a number machine. But when you have a double-sided equation, and you need to write all this down as we're going along, so pause the video if you haven't been writing yet. When we have a double-sided equation, you have algebra on both sides. So it sort of looks like two different questions sort of stuck together because you're not used to seeing x on the left and some x's on the right as well. But they're not as bad as you might think. It's not two different questions, don't panic. This is one question, and all you've got to do is sort it out, tidy it up. And actually, if you know what to do here, they don't take very long at all. Now, normally I'd explain this if we were in school by using you lot sitting in my classroom. So if you imagine that that's my classroom, and the green are the boys, and the yellow are the girls. And what I'd like to do, I'm doing an experiment of who works better together, whether it's mixed up like this or putting all the boys on one side and all the girls on the other. So what I decide one day is that I want you all to swap places. So I've got all the boys, and remember boys are green in this diagram. I want all the boys on one half of the room and all the girls, which are the yellow dots, on the other half of my classroom. So what would be the easiest way to do that? Does it matter which side they go on? Not really. I don't mind whether the girls are on the left or the boys are on the left. I don't mind who's on the right, as long as the girls are all together and the boys are all together. But if I want it done quickly, probably the easiest thing to do is to say to these two boys, so though and sit over there, because it's easier to move two boys than to move the other seven boys who already sat there. And likewise, it's easier for these four girls here to move over there than for all of these girls to swap. So the easiest way to do it is to pick the sides that involve the least amount of movement rather than practically the whole class having to get up. Okay? And that idea helps us when we're solving equations because when you, really when you're solving an equation, and we haven't talked about this yet, but you're trying to get the letters on one side and the numbers on the other. So they're jumbled at the minute, like the girls and boys were jumbled, but I'd like to sort them out so they're on their own sides. So if you look at my equation then, I've got 8x plus 5 on the left, and I've got 3x plus 25 on the right. And the easiest way for me to get the letters one side and the numbers the other is to say to this 3x, you're on the wrong side, you need to go and be with the 8x. But remember, it's not as simple as that. When you do things in equations, if there's a plus 5 in an equation, it changes to a minus 5. When there's a times, it changes to a divide. So when that 3x swaps sides, it actually changes to a minus 3x. Because in front of there is a little plus sign. We don't write it in because you don't put a plus on everything. You don't walk into a shop and ask for plus three bags of sweets. You just say three bags of sweets. But it's positive, And when it swaps sides, it goes negative. 
But then if the X's are going to the left, so when I move the boys to the left, the girls on this side should realize as soon as they see those two boys moving over, that they also need to get up because they are now on the wrong side as well. So this plus five, which is a number, needs to go over there to be with the 25, which is a number. But remember again, when things swap side, they go negative. So what we end up with, on the left, we already had 8x, and 3x came over from the right, but because of the rules of equations, it has to change to a minus 3x. Unfortunately, when the boys swap sides, they don't turn to minus boys. That would be nice to get rid of a couple. But when you solve an equation, positives change to negatives. On the right-hand side, now we've already got 25. I won't bother putting the plus on. I'll just say 25 because it's the first thing anyway. And the plus 5 that came over changes to a minus 5. Okay, I can't show that in my classroom that people turn to minuses, but when you solve equations, pluses go to minuses. So on the left, I had 8x and I've got to take away 3x. That leaves me with 5x. On the right, we had 25 and we've got to take away 5, which leaves us with 20. And then to finish it off, because I want x on its own, so I want x equals something. Now I'm going to get rid of the 5, so I divide by 5. So 20 divided by 5 is 4. And that's how you solve a double-sided equation. You've got to get the letters on one side and the numbers on the other side. And then you can solve it. Okay, so what I'd like you to do in your books is to make sure you've got this written down. When parts of an equation, and we call them terms, swap sides, they change from positive to negative and vice versa, because you've got to remember that. When, when you move x's from right to left or left to right, they go opposite. When you move numbers from left to right, they have to go opposite. But the idea is to get all the letters on one side and all the numbers on the other. So what I've got now is lots of questions, and we can work through them together. So it might be an idea, maybe I'll do the first one. Then you can pause the video and have a go at the next two and see if you were right. So you could sort of copy my answer for number one if you're confident enough to try. So on this first one, I've got 7x and 3 on the left and I've got 2x and 23 on the right. So it's easier to move the 2x over there. The real reason for that is because I would rather do 7x take away 2x than if I did it the other way around, I would have to do 2x take away 7x, and that will go negative and make my life harder. So I move the smallest one to keep it all positive. So I've got 7x, which was already there, minus, remember it changes to a negative, 2x. Now what happens to the plus 3? The plus 3 goes the other way. So on the other side of my equation, now we already had 23, and we're going to take away 3. Remember, they swap from positive to negative. Then we tidy it up. So we've got 5x on the left, because 7x take away 2x is 5x. And we've got 20 on the right. And then we divide by 5 to finish it off. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now, if you want to have a go at the next one, maybe, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the 6x over there, because it's easier to do 8 take away 6 than 6 take away 8. So, 8x take away 6x. That means I've got to move this minus 2 to the right. The opposite of minus 2 is adding 2. So 12 was already there, so write that down first, then add 2. Now that gives us, if we tidy it up, so 8x take away 6x is 2x, and 12 add 2 is 14. And all I've got to do now is divide by 2, so 7. And these questions look really similar every time, look. So x's are going to the left and the numbers are going to the right. And this one's the same thing again. So I'm going to pick up that 2x, 
I'm going to put it over there with the 6x. Remember, it changes to a minus. And the minus 1, I'm going to put it over there to be with the 23, but that's going to change to a plus 1. So we get 6x take away 2x equals 23 add 1. Remember, it changes to an add. If you forget to change your signs, it will go wrong. On the left, altogether, we've got 4x. On the right, altogether, we've got 24. And then divide by 4 to finish it off. And you end up with 6. OK, so they, those three were all quite similar because the x's went to the left and the numbers went to the right. Have a look at these ones. These are different. And they're different because I've got a smaller number of x's on the left. So now, it doesn't make sense to bring the 6x over to be with the 3x. If I did that, let me show you what would happen if I brought this over. It would go negative, and I would have to do 3x, which is already there first, take away 6x, and that's going to go negative. If I keep going anyway, so equals, now I've already got minus 1 on the right hand side, and now I've got to take away 17. So that's also negative. So I'm getting minus numbers in my workings, which I can easily avoid if I decide that it's easier to move the 3x to the right and do 6x, take away 3x. Now that means that this minus 1 has got to go to the left. So 17 is already there. Always write down the thing which is already there first. Add 1. It doesn't matter which side the x's and numbers are on. Just try and keep things as positive as you can. So on the left, we've got 18. On the right, we've got 3x. How do we get rid of the 3 from by there? We divide by 3. Don't worry that it looks back to front. That makes no difference. 18 divided by 3 is 6 x equals 6. You can swap it around at the end if you like, but this is perfectly fine. It happens when you move your x's to the right hand side. It kind of looks like a mirror image of what you're used to, but it's absolutely fine. Have a look at the next one. Is it easier to move the 7 and do 5 take away 7? Or is it easier to move the 5 and do 7 take away 5? I would rather do 7 take away 5. So I'll move the 5 over there. So 7x take away 5x. So the minus 8 is going to come over here. So write down the 6 first, then plus 8 because it changes signs. So we've got 14 on the left. We've got 2x on the right. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So 7 equals x or x equals 7. You can say it either way around. And then the last one on this row. Is it better to move the 3 and do 9 take away 3? Or is it easier to move the 9 and do 3 take away 9? It's easier to move the 3. So this question is like the ones up here, look. So the x's are going to the left. So it's better to do 9x take away 3x than it is to do it the other way round. So then I've got, now be careful here, we've got minus 1 on the right. And we're going to add 13 when that comes over. Now tidying that up then, I've got 6x on the left. If it's minus 1 degrees and you add 13, you go up to 12. Then we divide by 6. So our answer is 2. The biggest thing to remember here is when you're choosing which way to move things, move it in a way so you don't get negatives if you can help it. Okay, 8 take away 6 is easier than 6 take away 8. 7 take away 5 is easier than 5 take away 7 and so on. So be careful which way you move things. If you think you've got a lot of minuses, Probably the easiest thing to do is to start again, but move things the opposite way around to what you did the first time. Now, here I've got some double-sided equations that have got brackets. So this is about as hard as it gets in year 7. Uh, sorry, year 8. So remember what we said about brackets, you've got to expand them. 
So all I'm going to do for a minute is expand this. So 3 times 4 is 12x and 3 times 1 is 3, but it's going to be minus 3 equals 7x plus 32. So now the brackets are gone, we can solve it. I would rather do 12 take away 7, so I'm going to pick up the 7 and take it that way. So 12x take away 7x. And then that means I've got to do 32, which was there first, add 3. On the left, that's 5x. On the right, it's 35. And if you divide by 5, you get 7. So that's the answer to that one. It's just putting it all together now. Brackets, moving things, solving, all in one big question. This one has got brackets on both sides. So on the left, we've got 2 times 2 and 2 times 9. On the right we've got 3 times 2 and 3 times 3 but be careful because of the minus that's going to be minus 9. <clears throat> now is it easier to do 4 take away 6 if I move it that way or is it easier to do 6 take away 4 if I move it that way? I would much rather do 6 take away 4. So 6x take away 4x on the right this time. That means the minus 9's got to go the other way. But it'll change to a plus 9. Then we get 27 on the left and 2x on the right. This is not as nice as the others. 27 divided by 2 is 13 and a half. So 13.5 is x. You could actually leave it like that if it doesn't divide nicely. So either of those, if they don't divide nicely, you can leave it as a fraction. So for instance, if I had to do 4x equals 9, so 9 divided by 4, if it's an equation, I wouldn't bother trying to work it out. You can leave it, leave it like that, and that would be fine. Okay?